What is Rec City? Um, hmm. <laughs> Rec City. What is Rec City? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Do you want to go first? Rec City is a, a bunch of uh, artists from all over North America who are here in Calgary for over a month. It's a community based project. Rec City is a space to talk about sort of the viability of the arts, but also the viability of living. Rec City is a way at looking at the potential of spaces that we wouldn't ordinarily consider to be artistic spaces. It seems to be about about responding to a current situation that we have here in Calgary and thinking about sort of the expanded uh, realm of the gallery. In the context of the art world. Ignite and bring out of the woodwork. Uh, unbridled creativity that you don't always see. And working with empty space that is scattered throughout the city. In alternative spaces. Buildings slated for demolition or significant change. That will no longer exist. What is Rec City? Reuse, finding things, putting things in strange spaces. An opportunity to work freely and responsibly. Um, allow something really meaningful or playful. Strange and unexpected. It happen that otherwise might not have a chance. What is Rec City? I think we're, we're all just trying to discover that. Um, I had assumed at the beginning that we were going to trash these, <laughs> these houses and uh, give them a real sort of send-off. It turns out there are multiple venues in the city in various forms of uh, flux or uh, gentrification. I'm David Hoffis, artist from Lethbridge. Most of my work involves uh, installation uh, using often discarded technologies, um, illusionistic techniques that, that I discover or borrow from other forms of stagecraft and cinema. So funny. I even like my little... Oh, I know, the, the, the waggle we call it in golf. One of the pieces I'm doing uh, for Rex City, um, when I arrived at the residency, the only really theme, real theme I had in mind was uh, golf, because I had been golfing every day uh, as part of my physio. And when we arrived at the houses, one of the houses has a huge feature in the living room, which is a putting green and so immediately that became a kind of meaningful site uh, for a possible intervention. What are we waiting for? Oh here I'm creating a piece that is visible only after dark and maybe only by casual wanderers on the sidewalk. Uh, I just wanted these doomed houses to have a nighttime presence in the neighborhood. Uh, before they disappear forever. I'll have two pieces at the old radio station on 16th Avenue as well as the piece here. I think the kind of work I do fits into this, the kind of um, context of something like Rec City. Often, even if I'm showing work in a gallery space, I will treat it as a kind of site where it doesn't, it's not the white cube anymore, and I'm using the interior space of the, of the, of the gallery. Um, so in something like this that's more itinerant, I guess, and uh, temporary, you can explore those, uh, those techniques in a, um, in a way that is more connected to site. For my pieces at the radio station, I actually had a sort of boyhood relationship with that radio station, CKXL. Every night they had a battle of the bands and they would have an, a new single that would come out on Friday or something. And that single would go up against um, uh, the new song coming in. And I remember particularly the battle between uh, B 52 is My Own Private Idaho, and uh, which was un wasn't unseated until about two weeks later when Devo's Whip It came out. So I associated CKXL with sort of <clears throat> songs of summer and um, leisure and uh, fun and um, Top 40. 
Uh, and so to actually be installing in one of those radio booths, I can kind of feel the echoes of that uh, nostalgia or just connection to, to my boyhood. Uh, so I'm doing a piece that also responds to some of the works that are also going into the radio station. It seems like there's a theme of satire about condo developments and um, gentrification and development progress. Uh, so my piece will be almost like a <clears throat> futuristic but 19th century looking advertisement for a vacation getaway. And I thought about the word vacation because that's what you have to do to these houses before they're torn down. Um, and so that word just became so resonant for um, the idea of both leisure and, and doom in a way. Like vacation, it's vacation time, vacate now. Uh, I'm Zane, Zane Alam. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm here to continue with my practice, primarily working with archives, found materials, uh, oral histories, to build out an installation and compose music for the installation, all built from uh, materials that I find here uh, in my archival and library explorations in Calgary and Alberta. My own piece is going to be in the radio station, and I'm going to be, uh, it's going to be an installation that combines a lot of documents I've found here, um, a lot of forms relating to immigration and uh, people entering the country, um, where I am seeing a very interesting, fascinating, dark and hopeful continuity of language that I find uh, between both oral histories and memories and also stuff that you find in very bureaucratic forms. And uh, a lot of the oral histories and audio recordings that I'm sourcing from the archives and from the libraries are going to find their way into a longer musical composition that I'm working on as well right now. And that composition will be playing on loop uh, at the installation. Um, Rec City to me is funny because so much of the open call and the language around the program is about kind of, you know, reuse, finding things, putting things in strange spaces. I'm not necessarily somebody who works with, like, actual things as much as I do with media and stories, but I think it makes it that much more fun for me because I get to put the two together. Back in 1913, my father's name was Lee Dofu, his, uh, his uh, married name was Lee Kawa. The reason why I, my name is Paul Dofu is because uh, when he came here, the immigration authorities uh, used his uh, name as his surname uh, and instead of reversing the order of the name uh, as it is in Chinese. And I'm a Louis, but we've always been known as Dofu's here in Calgary. This is Weirdos right here. <laughs> I'm Sarah Tilly. I'm Jamie G. I'm Sarah Smalik. We're a, yeah. like a performance and installation collective, and I guess we use lots of different things in a big old collage experience where we are usually performing inside the artwork in Tennessee. We found a newspaper clipping from 1993 in the radio station that was um, a review of Charlie Chaplin films with a film still of him from modern times. So there's like a giant um, 
glass two-paneled window looking into the room, the main room. former recording studio. So, like, immediately when you go in that smaller room and you look in, you have a certain feeling when you go in there um, of looking in on a habitat or some kind of private viewing of maybe an animal's enclosure. So we were starting to think of ideas of zoos, but then also cells. Um, and in, in modern times, like Charlie Chaplin is happiest in his cell and he only wants to go back to jail and jail is very cushy. Um, so we were Compared also- Compared to duking it out in reality. <laughs> yeah, like super interested in that idea and how it's still very relevant. Like, and this idea of um, paradise as a prison. Yes. yes. If, if I, um, I traced the word paradise back to walled enclosure. It's actually named walled enclosure. Which kind of like made sense to like fit that into what we were doing here. Mm -hmm. So Charlie's like in his paradise, which is prison. Yeah, it's like a sanctuary. Kind of like this idea of like a zoo enclosure has this dual purpose of being like a conservation as well yeah. as like this idea of like, well, they're wild animals. And but, like these are also specimens of a species and there are other layers of the piece that are interactive for a public. Um, the ways that they can affect Charlie uh, inside the sanctuary. I feel like what we're working towards is like that performance time that we'll get together once it's done. And we are going to be performing. people will get to the idea of just what Charlie represents, which is like joy and playfulness and like sort of an innocence. Um, and like the, the prison is kind of like protecting that or like giving it a space to be real because life is hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's also and, like, like a symbol of the total disenfranchised person. Like mm -hmm. he's like an immigrant. He's a person without a home. He's, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it is uh, hopefully a way to to honor that or like to give it um, mm -hmm. you know a loving space for it to exist. website and everything that means. <laughs> so we're taking a look at uh, internet culture and uh, social networks, touching a bit on privacy and trying to create a uh, immersive experience based around our uh, browsing uh, lifestyles. and uh, AdWord uh, things from Facebook, uh, we'll be collecting them, so. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You might like. Yeah. Velvet. The, the feel of velvet. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been working with different forms of sort of video and performance, and right now we're working with VR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's like <laughs> Recognize any of those spots? Yeah, it's my old job. <laughs> We're kind of making these absurd, sort of, I guess, quasi-humorous, quasi-informative uh, experiences where you can kind of go into the internet in sort of a physical sense and see both the way that you're tracked online as well as sort of the slippery slope of getting into the anonymous deep web. So our uh, installation here at Rec City has a few parts. We have a, uh, a room which is constructed like a, a Faraday cage uh, with an anonymous browsing station at it where people can actually go on and browse the uh, deep web completely anonymously. Uh, we have another room that's kind of an intake room where we will be um, interviewing people and, uh, and collecting some anonymous parts of their social media information. And then we have a third room, which is the virtual reality experience, where people will actually be able to enter into their uh, their browsing information and experience it in a 
in a immersive way. Rexity is a way at looking at the potential of spaces that we wouldn't ordinarily consider to be artistic spaces and it's a way of kind of taking conventional architectures and messing with them and queering them and making them into something totally uh, strange and unexpected. For me, Rex City is a way of responding to the current situation that we have here in Calgary and I mean, across the world, I imagine, but particularly in Calgary, where there's a lot of empty spaces that are just not being used. The space that we're in right now hasn't been used for 15 years, so it's a way of uh, repurposing and taking advantage of this uh, empty space that is scattered throughout the city. I'm Lynn Hinton. I'm Chris Foster. And this is our story. Both of our practices, we have worked site specifically. Uh, we're really interested in uh, kinetic sculpture and place, and working with found materials, and find, trying to find connections and relations to uh, site and place as sort of the catalyst that brings those things together. We liked this dank kitchen because it had a lot of um, kind of like a lot of meat to respond to. It's not an empty space. There's like the walk-in fridges that we're in now, um, lots of stainless steel, kind of interesting materials. And so uh, for this project, we've been interested in sort of pulling from that using the language of an industrial kitchen uh, and the sort of like the silver and the kitchen implements um, and even thinking about uh, sort of utility or the bowels of the building, this kitchen's in the basement. So it's like the basement of this heritage building that would have housed um, a lot of the utility, or utility parts. Yeah. yeah, I think we're both interested in the tension between function and fashion and how like throughout uh, the fabric of our society is these um, connections and, and tensions between uh, like beauty and, and function, and, you know, especially with kinetic sculpture where there's all these things that are aesthetic and also mm -hmm. can go terribly wrong technical This is the first time we've collaborated on a project, and so it's, a, it's been fun and also challenging in a lot of different ways. Totally. Uh, to both work on like a short timeline, to respond to a space, to work together, and uh, yeah, agree and compromise and challenge each other. Yeah. Feeling like we've gotten somewhere now. Yeah. Totally. So we're using mechanical components as well, which is exciting, mostly rotisserie motors. My name is Laura Hudspeth and I'm a sculpture and installation artist based in Toronto, Ontario. Molding and casting really forms the basis of my work, whether it be sculptural or video related. I think a good place to start in speaking a little about who I am and where I'm coming from is to say that I'm a fairly political person outside of the studio. I think at this point it's probably a redundant thing to say that while we live in incredibly interesting times, they're also quite troubled. And it has been noted many times before that 
we seem to be incredibly politically divided, and yet our culture is peppered with apathy. So with this in mind, one of the most common threads across my work is in parsing through social behaviors that I notice in order to get a look at the overarching ideologies that frame our common day-to-day experience. For the residency, I've been set up in a former restaurant space. So I've decided to make this big fountain. You can see it in the process of installation here. Uh, that's riffing on uh, canonical art history and the pose of the figure that's going to be situated in the center is in this kind of typical swimming pool structure underneath a shower head um, and cast in pink glycerin soap. So as the exhibition proceeds, he will slowly be washed away from the canon of art history. Much of my work revolves around embedding social political cues into the still life sculptures that I make, creating an interplay between issues of the day with idiom and humor and absurdity. I often make these elaborate and decadent cornucopia-like works that are meant to ensnare us visually and spark kind of deep-seated desires. The more elaborate, the better. I'm interested in the difference between innate human desires and those that are prompted by exterior forces. A question that has been raised a lot recently in contemporary art discourse revolves around whether and how art can be effectively political. For myself, I think art and other creative cultural expressions has the ability at least to raise questions, maintain conversations, and I personally find it interesting to see this play out within that context. Maybe even see through a sort of thin mirror the ideologies may encourage our lizard selves. Um, I'm Katrin Booker, and I am currently <laughs> a Rec City resident artist. Performance actions in the everyday, some really exciting work in Mexico City, again, working with um, independent spaces that do a lot of intersectional feminist practice, um, but that also are social spaces, and so that idea of, to me it's about coming into focus about where we are, which it seems to be wherever I land, I, I'm, I see states of crisis, and I'm really interested in how people are responding collectively to that. And the more that I think about how, how we're projecting our own futures, <laughs> I also think about how we're revisiting questions of memory. So um, I seem to be working in between those two, um, yeah, those two trains of thought often. Um, which as a performance artist is interesting because I'm always thinking about the fact that I'm, I'm, my attempt is to mark a space with an action in a way that will ideally be remembered. But the stories that kind of unfold with gardens are, um, you know, also very like, they're like the fabric of our society. So but I wanted to do this and I showed her a picture when the garden was totally overgrown and she was like, that's not gonna be possible. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna do it then. And she told me this phrase that a friend of hers told her, which was that soil is soul. And that really stuck with me. And so I guess, you know, for me, it's just really an opportunity to connect with people that I wouldn't otherwise get to meet. You know, my attempt is to, is to transcend um, a certain limitation, right? And so, in doing that, I find myself in a, in a point of transformation, and then that performance no longer exists as well. Rise up, yeah. oh, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, oh, oh, oh. And to the presence of everyone in a particularly challenging occasion last night in which we witnessed an act of violence against a First Nations woman. And I thank you for your presence today in that same intentional way. Rise up, 
Today we celebrate the life of Berta Caceres, Francia Marquez, Beverly Geronimo, Pasio Reynoso, protesting the presence of different kinds of exploitations of their lands. It's interesting to, you know, that my form of work is also coming against, like I'm creating <laughs> in a space also that um, is in a state of transition. And so, yeah, like Rex City seems to me to be about states of flux, states of transition, right? Constant states of transition. I'm Rachel Zareda. And I'm Mikhail Miller. Uh, collectively, we are in Nasarimba. Nasarimba is a word that we've made up, and to us it means creating mischief. We started working together in 2015, and um, we started making wood assemblage, collage, sculptural works that were kind of a starting ground for us to build our visual vocabulary and uh, start making public interventions. Yeah, and the process of making these sculptures um, draws on similarities that we have in our practice uh, to do with color and using form to create um, compositions in, in a space. Last year, we started to work on large-scale murals. And um, since then, we've in the last year, we've painted like over 20 murals. Mm -hmm. And we took a trip to Mexico, which was very uh, inspiring to see the culture or of public art down there. Hmm, just the way of, of being able to paint and people are able to express themselves without going through as many hoops as, as we find you have to do here. The name of the, this piece you see behind us is Through Hoops and uh, we wanted to reference the way that artists or just in general people have to jump through so many hoops or red tape to just do some things that might be out of the ordinary but are adding to everyday life and uh, we're just happy to be working so freely in this space we were able just to jump in there and respond to the space that we're actually working in and along with the environment it's been really nice to do this project because uh, the Rec City folk are staying in this house, so we got to be around everyone, and it was a great way to share our work. The other project that we are working on is a vacant office space in the downtown core. That's so being, it's being converted into condo living. The first things we started to do was to take out a lot of the office decor, like the like a really gross wall-to-wall -wall carpet that was installed in there, um, some of the desks, but we kept all of the material that we took out of there. We're approaching it um, by using the colors that we're finding downtown, like beiges and grays, and um, just like the decor of office, of office life, we're trying to turn inside out. A term you hear in this city a lot, and it ha and it's been happening a lot, especially in music venues and stuff, is is kind of like this corporate facelift. So we're trying to do like a reverse corporate facelift, and instead of making things, <laughs> crushing things, yeah, crushing creativity, crushing expression, we're trying to repurpose those materials and that uh, vocabulary and turn it into something fun, creative, Hi, I'm Amber. This and I'm Jeff. Jeff. And and we're here working on Rec City from Regina, Saskatchewan. we got a couple different projects we're working on here, but yeah, one of them is uh, sort of reimagining this condo uh, unit sales center as a reimagining of somebody's total lifestyle and we're going to engage people to like answer questions and go through a bit of a process with us in one of our spaces. Another thing we have been working on is um, a barn raising. 
yeah, it kind of it coincided with this um, community stamping breakfast, pancake breakfast. So there was a group of people that had all just finished eating pancakes and we dressed them up in silver seats and we had a good old fashioned mirror raising. Time has come, as is tradition in these sort of affairs, as I've been told, to ceremoniously raise this heavy beer up onto the roof so that no longer will we have to strain our necks to gaze into the sky. <laughs> Welcome to Lifestyle Landing, a state-of-the-art condo facility and a new approach to living life. A commitment to Lifestyle Landing includes the very best in modern interior design, featuring luxury appliances, a wide array of amenities and social engagements strategically selected for every day of the week. With the help of our highly trained lifestyle optimizers, you will be outfitted with a diverse array of lifestyle options, specially catered to your unique needs. These include various sports engagements, fitness pursuits, and leisure activities. Beauty and leisure are a key priority at Lifestyle Landing. Kick back and relax in an unparalleled cosmopolitan location. Lifestyle Landing will pair you with the perfect wine, the perfect mate, and even the perfect I'm Bill Gunderson, Executive Lifestyle Optimizer. Uh, if you have a couple of minutes uh, and you'd like to fill out our brief survey, we will fill you out. We will hook you up with your new life. Just take a look at your data here. Yeah. Oh, you're missing a phone call. At least for tonight. Um, when I am feeling stressed out, I like to with your first week here at Lifestyle Landing, you'll see your condo model here. Oh yeah, uh, we'll be seeing you in three months for your first performance okay. review. Hi, my name is Frederick. I'm half of the Collaborative Duo Long Distance Call. We're here in Calgary to be part of the Rec City Residency. We got here a couple weeks ago and we're about halfway through our process. We'll be mixing different images, archive, found text, and different other media to mix, match, interpret, reinterpret different archival histories and historical narratives of the neighborhood. My name is Marianne R. Williams. Um, I'm a librarian and an artist, also one half of Long Distance Call. Um, our practice is really interested in playing with notions of truth and history. Um, so between Fred and I, we work on creating um, narratives from objects as well as images. 
and um, writing about those in different, different ways. So in my professional life as a librarian, I work a lot with documents and these ideas of truth. And um, as an artist, I'm really interested in doing the things that I'm not allowed to do as a librarian. So creating made up meetings or assigning meaning to objects that maybe didn't exist and, and being a lot more subjective in how I interact with, with works and uh, ideas of truth. For Rec City, we are working with um, collecting ambiguous objects and uh, different things that may or may not be meaningful from Marta Loop and um, creating different interpretations of them to suit narratives that are based on truth um, but could be completely made up. And uh, it'll culminate in a, um, a garage sale that we are putting together for the opening um, where we'll sell different texts and objects that we've um, created throughout our residency here. We're interested in working with different mediums so they complement one another in a critical but also fun way so it's accessible from different points of view. Working with photography or sanotype, uh, working with print form in terms of making an ad in the, in the area to gather the local community to come here through a different artist book or multiples, through sculptures, 3D printed sculpture, casting, a lot of different things that might stimulate viewers, and might stimulate others to engage with different discourse. I'm uh, Teresa Tam, born and raised in Calgary. I'm trying to get people to interact with my project. So I have stuff that I want to give them away, but I'm trying to figure out how to get people to also give me things. So I'm thinking of like, yeah, how do condo people interact with people? And then maybe try to incorporate some of that into my interaction with the audience. See, when people come by, they're usually looking, so they're usually buying, or, or looking to buy. These are all under construction and for sale. Okay. So then what I would do is I would normally kind of uh, chat with the people, see what they're looking for. I'm really interested in how do I interact with audience with my piece that isn't typical, developing a new relationship between people via art karaoke videos or creating shops and that's kind of my practice and then handling and dealing with labor is also really important too. So for Rex City I'm in this old coffee shop um, in here and I'm going to re attempt to revitalize the space transform it into like a tea house it's meant to like imitate I guess what is considered a good life or imitating things to achieve like a good life and so it's like a it's like a space that kind of is aware that it's gonna disappear soon and sort of use a lot of like imitations to like not just preserve but also to show the limitations of I guess getting somewhere because like imitation isn't like necessarily a bad thing but it's because we imitate to like learn, we imitate to grow. So this is like the kind of a conversation about at what point do we keep imitating something and losing something about ourselves or losing something that's original or real into like, yeah, so what do we lose while we're growing? So anyone who comes in, they can have, so there's two different types of teas people can have. And uh, every day it's like a, a blend that I created. And so these tea blends, are um, a combination of um, teas you'd find in like Asia, um, so like green tea, but then also teas, like tea, like green tea and oolong, but also um, teas that has been imported um, into Asia. So like things like corn, like corn tea is like quite popular in South Korea. And I'm using, so I'm gonna combine like sort of like the importedness of tea culture into Asia and also the, exported tea culture out of Asia. So I'm also exploring things like milk tea, like the fact that, you know, milk and sugar was included because of the British people um, colonizing uh, China. Along with that, people can, uh, I'll be, I'm making these, um, I'm calling them memory keepers. So one of them is a USB that's been uh, covered with resin. And the other item is like a small, notepad that has like a resin backing and so I'll be kind
cutting and producing all of these um, materials. And so yeah, one's analog and one's digital, and then people can actually um, quote unquote buy them. And so instead of buying though, they have to fill out this order form. And that order form sort of is like more of an agreement. So it's like agreeing to certain things that they have to check off. And if they agree to everything, they're able to actually own the items. And so these are the things I'll be building. And there's like a limited run of 100 per product. Hi, I'm Sarah Huo. Um, I'm a Rec City artist for 2018 residency. So I'm a Métis artist, so I'm doing uh, or making an effort to learn some traditional crafts to incorporate into my practice. I started on some more beadwork like before Christmas time, and um, with this kind of thing, I feel like I'm trying to figure out what makes it authentic, and I feel like that's um, honoring cultural protocols and traditional, traditional ways of knowing and learning. So consulting with elders and um, yeah, just kind of learning about um, my culture through these practices. Is, um, and with the Métis, we're the flower beadwork people, kind of known as. So um, I'm trying to create these images of ancestors made of different uh, plants and, and floral motifs. This piece is called The Boy Who Keeps Ghosts and it's based on um, my son and his namesake, who was um, the Tal Ghost Keeper, um, three generations ago. Uh, his name was actually Vital Richard, and uh, he lived in a little place called Kathleen. I think it was a settlement, and um, he looked after the cemetery there, and so his nickname became Ghost Keeper. And so um, he took that on as, as his last name and his children, and they, they continued it on. So um, we named Patel after him, and since Patel's been born, he's kind of gone to a lot of funerals and there's been a lot of losses in our life. So I thought it would be interesting to do a project based on a child's um, perspective of grief and loss and how they deal with it and how maybe I could make it um, something um, interactive for him and for other people to come into. So we're kind of using um, pop-up book techniques to um, bring the audience in to be able to um, look at the space. Vitello's character is able to travel through realms and so this realm he travels into is into uh, this world where these are his ancestors and it'll open like a pop-up book and he'll be able to um, uh, come and visit them and be able to cross through those worlds and so his idea is we need to build a portal. So the challenge of this residency is to uh, build a portal that'll be, um, well, acceptable to a six-year-old, so, and, and using mostly cardboard. So okay, that's, uh, that's what we're up to right now. Yeah, I've been uh, interested in, in kind of using modern day fantasy and sci-fi, and also um, traditional Métis legends and storytelling, like grew up with, with Saki Chalk and all these different kind of characters and tricksters and uh, shapeshifters and so I'm interested in that and so a lot of it is collaborating with him and working with him to um, to be able to have an art practice as, as a parent and incorporate him and his creativity and also just um, topics that I've always been interested in. The drill or I'm working on, uh, like, can drill, can you actually make uh, technology? I'm Sarah Van Sloden, and I am an interdisciplinary artist working mostly with paint and sculpture and installation and photos. I'm here in the Devonish. So in this space, we are not really allowed to alter any of the structures very much. So I have been working on some more sculptural things. I'm making a few structures that I'll be able to display objects on. 
Basically, I'm working with what exists here already in terms of what's available to use, like little hooks and stuff and, and pipes that are on the ceiling, and I'm trying to use those to, to hang a few little things as well. So the objects I'm collecting as a part of the residency um, specifically are things that have been presumably dropped by young children. Um, so they're, they're items like maybe toys or pacifiers or baby bottles or um, anything like that. Um, and yeah, I'm collecting those specifically because um, I recently uh, had a daughter and she is making me become aware <laughs> of the things that children lose and drop a lot of the time. And so yeah, I've, I've had an eye for those and I've decided to start collecting them. Uh, the Rec City is a group of curators who've decided to come together and curate artists in alternative spaces. I'm really excited for the exhibition and I'm really happy to be working with so many cool artists from all over the place. The first couple Rec Cities seem to be a little bit more like local in nature and this residency has so many interesting people. My name is Nate McLeod. I'm a Calgary-based artist. I run uh, Avalanche Institute of Contemporary Art with my partner Cassandra Paul, um, which was a small artist-run space that uh, showed the work of emerging artists and um, operated for about five years. I've been kind of focused on ideas of gentrification and the role that artists play in, uh, in those processes. And, um, one of the things that I'm kind of focused on right now is the, the first building that Avalanche operated out of, which was actually just torn down about three weeks ago, around the end of June 2018. And um, so I was able to recover a few of the, uh, the bricks that were, in the, um, that were used for the building, uh, these great bricks that were stamped with uh, the word Calgary on them. So what I've been doing is uh, reproducing as many of these as I can. I've made a mold of it and I'm casting them out of plaster and uh, tinting the plaster different colors. Um, yeah, that was kind of a starting point for this, uh, this project is, is the bricks. Um, and then I've also, the site most recently where the, the building was has been used as uh, uh, parking during the stampede. So um, it's just been like very quickly, uh, all the demolition stuff was removed and then the, uh, uh, they, they hung up uh, flags to kind of divide it into rows and then put up construction fencing and they're just selling parking spots during the stampede. So um, I'm kind of making several paintings based on the signage, the hand painted uh, or the hand drawn signage that was around the parking lot. So um, I'm working on three paintings that'll be part of the project and then um, a series of uh, flags that are based on the ones that are at the parking lot. So I've just kind of started making these right uh, just over the last few days. but. This is kind of the form that they'll take. They'll be like strings of flags. Um, and typically these would be really brightly colored, like blue, green, yellow, and red. Um, the ones that, uh, that are down at the, the parking lot right now, but I've kind of um, made them out of canvas and just done really light washes of gesso to match the way that I'm working on the paintings. And yeah, so I'm working on these. These are kind of gonna be strung on this construction fence, um, along with the bricks, which will be placed in the space. I think I'm kind of interested in that with the building that I'm showing in the Devonish, which was built in, I think, 1910 or 1912, somewhere around there. And the building uh, that we were in uh, for Avalanche was a building called the Eastern Block that was built in 1910. Um, so I think it's kind of, it's interesting to kind of like do these things that are sort of paying homage to that original space uh, within a building that uh, very likely has these Calgary bricks as well. Um, since I've started casting them, several people have told me that they're uh, their houses um, have these bricks in them. What is Rec City? Um, hmm. <laughs> Rec City is, I don't know, I mean, I guess Rec City, I feel like it's changed a lot since it started. Um, it's, you know, I think the first iteration was really, uh, you know, there was tons of people, it was super spontaneous. Um, I think people were really like activating the spaces in an interesting way. 
um, and over the past few projects. I think, I mean, it's been interesting with this project because I think the, the group of artists and the time that the artists have had to spend with each other uh, is, is leading to a, like something that's still kind of spontaneous and responsive to the spaces, but also really, really thoughtful about, um, you know, about what everybody's doing. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know that it's, I don't know that I can really say what Rec City is. I think it's kind of ever evolving.